Hi, this is Pat Sullivan, and later on you'll hear from Laura Lundy, and we're going to explain to you the proposed salary schedule, which would start, uh, if approved by the board, in uh, the fall of 2018. I do want to stress, and it is very important to understand, that at this point, this is just a proposal. It has not uh, received full board approval yet, and you know it will be presented to the board in May, uh, but again, until the board approves it, this is not something that you should take uh, as a for sure thing. In 2016-17, the Medford School District, along with board members, administration, teachers, support staff, and community members, met throughout the year to create a long-term strategic plan. Goal 6 in that plan directs the district to create a positive staff culture and high level of satisfaction by providing opportunity for staff to give feedback. From this goal, the Teacher Employee Relations Committee was created with representatives of each building. We had administrators and also school board members. The new salary and professional development plan that the committee created will be presented at the May 17th board meeting. If approved, this plan will go into effect on July 1st, 2018. The Employee Relations Committee reviewed multiple plans from other districts. After much discussion, the committee came to consensus on the following. Number one was clear steps and levels so that staff could project their future earnings. Number two was to add an educational component so that staff can earn additional compensation by improving themselves as educators. In order to create a salary schedule with steps and levels, the committee needed to find a way to combine over 150 different salaries into just 20 steps. This process will take three years to complete. In 2020-21, the finalized salary schedule will allow for a consistent raise each year. Let's take a moment to review how we place staff into a cell and how the process will work. First, we had to place everyone into one of the 20 cells. Placing new teachers was the easiest because they were all making the same salary of $38,000. Notice that all 10 new teachers were placed into level 1B. In 2018-19, all teachers in level 1B will be making $39,100. Because they all started at the same salary, the raise in this group is the same for everyone. $1,100. The rest of the groups were created using $500 increments. As you can see in example 2, teachers 11 through 15 had salaries between $38,284 and $38,500. This group was placed in level 1C and will be making $40,200 in 1819. The difference between this group and the new teacher group is that not everyone in the se in this second group will be making the same raise in year one because their current salaries did not start out the same. The salary increase of this group is between seventeen hundred and one thousand nine hundred and sixteen. Let's look at example three. Any teacher whose current salary was fifty nine thousand dollars or above was placed in level 7 and were given the same raise of $1,050 in year 1. Remember that this was only year 1. To truly see the impact of the new salary schedule, you need to follow your salary th through for 3 years. Let's start with the teachers who started this year. Remember, they were placed in level 1B, $39,100. Because the salary schedule is still being built, no one will move to the right or down in year two, 2019-20. However, everyone will still receive a raise because each of the cells increased. Notice that even though teachers in level 1B are still in level 1B in 2019-20, their raise is $1,100. In the third year, 2020-21, the salary schedule is ready to be used. Therefore, teachers in level 1B 
will move to level 1C. This is an increase of $1,100. Looking at the three-year projection, notice that all 10 teachers made the same raise of $3,300 over three years. They started the same and they ended the same. This formula for raises will not be the same for teachers in levels two through six because they started in different spots. Let's look at an example. Here's an example from the middle of the schedule. A teacher at level 4B in 2018-19 will be making $49,950. In year 2019-20, that teacher will still be on level 4B, but will be making $51,500. Then in the third year, they will move over to the right to level 4C and will be making $53,500. Even though seven teachers are in the same cell, notice that employee 64 is projected to make $5,884 over three years, while employee 70 is projected to make $5,180. This is due to the collapsing of cells in years one and two and where their current salary is. Remember, starting in year 2020-21, all teachers in level 4B will make the same raise. If you are at the end of the schedule, which starts with employee 110, you were placed in level 7. The first year, you'll receive $1,050. The second and third years, you will receive $1,100. In the third year, level 7 drops off, and after level 6A, there are no more extra bumps. But each year, you'll receive the level 6 per step increase which is $1,100 in 2020-21. Over the next three years, staff on Level 7 are projected to increase their salary by $3,250. The committee also agreed there needed to be an educational component to the salary schedule. Therefore, there are two ways a staff member can move faster on the schedule. Each year, with a favorable evaluation, staff step to the right until they reach step C or D. Once they get to C or D, they must have accumulated at least 24 hours of professional development units to move to the next level. Because the schedule is still shifting in 1920, no staff member will be eligible to level down until 2020-2021. In 1920, if you are on level 1D or level 2, 3, 4, or 5C, you will be eligible to move to the next level if you have accumulated at least 24 professional development units by the June of 2020. The guidelines for PDUs is outlined in the handout and will be explained later in this presentation. Here's an example of leveling down. If I was on level 1D in 2019-20 and met the PDU requirement, I would move down and to the left in 2021. Please note that the raise is higher when you level down versus stepping across. I would then continue stepping to the right each year until I reach level 2C. Once I'm at 2C, I will need to have completed another 24 hours of PDUs to move down and to the left in level 3A. If a staff member continues on this path, it will take a new teacher 19 years to get to the top of the schedule. However, if a staff member wants to get to the top faster, they have three additional options. Option one, any staff member earning a master's after this year will move down a level. For example, if I was on level 2B and then earned my master's, instead of going to 2C the next year, I would go to 3B. The next year, I would step to the right. Earning your master's is just a one-time move on the schedule. Options two and three are to obtain your national boards or doctorate. Once this is earned, a staff member can jump two cells each year. For example, if I was on level 2B and earned my national boards, I'd move to level 3A the next year and then level 3C the following year. 
Therefore, I can get to the top at half the rate it would have taken me without my boards or my doctorate. Once I've reached the top of the schedule, I would level off and earn the level 6C amount each year. It is important to note that the movement for a master's does not pertain to a staff member who already has their master's. When you were placed on a level for 1819, all of your current education was taken into consideration, and the salary jump will only pertain to new masters. Now let's talk about Professional Development Units, or PDUs. In addition to the yearly requirements, staff members on levels 1 through 5 of the salary schedule must also complete at least 24 additional PDUs every 3 to 4 years in order to advance to the next level. If a staff member does not complete 24 additional PDUs within the allotted time frame, he or she will not move until they are completed. One PDU is worth one hour of professional development training, though there are some exceptions to this rule. For example, 45-minute seminars can be rounded up to one hour. A PDU can be defined as formal coursework, book study, attending or facilitating conferences and seminars, or informal learning opportunities situated in practice. PDUs are intensive and educational and will ideally incorporate implementation and an evaluation stage. Any PDUs that are not offered by the district must be approved by your principal and the director of curriculum and instruction. After teachers obtain level 6C, they will continue to earn the last per step increase on the schedule every year as long as they complete the required yearly professional development. Additional PDUs are encouraged but not required. A couple final comments. As you can see, the schedule for um, myself and Laura Lundy, uh, Jeff Albers, uh, where we will be uh, visiting the different buildings and explaining this in more detail. Uh, you know, if you if you are a Stetsonville teacher, uh, for example, and you can't make the Wednesday, May 3rd meeting, feel free to attend any of the other meetings uh, in, in uh, you know, any of the other buildings. Uh, this will be a great opportunity for you to, to ask questions. Uh, hopefully, uh, you, you'll have some time to really look this over and, and come up with any questions. Uh, the last thing I want to remind you of is the fact that this is a proposal. And please keep that in mind as we go through the process. We, we don't know yet uh, where this will be on the other end, uh, but it will go before the board in May, and we should all know by the end of May uh, you know, if, if this is something we will be starting with in the fall. Thank you.